so today's video is going to be more of a discussion. I'm not quite sure how I would edit this because we're going to be talking about some Hollywood related things and God forbid you use a video clip from something from Hollywood, but you could tell by the title of the video and the thumbnail, Star Wars Acolyte, Silent Hill 2, and kind of this new buzzword that we're seeing more and more called modern audiences and all of the things that are sort of tied in with that and what I think about it. And I kind of want to hear what you guys have to think about it, because when you hear something is being done for a modern audience, for a lot of people, it turns them off completely to whatever the project is let's take a look at something like star wars the acolyte now i am not the biggest star wars fan in the world when it comes to star wars stuff i like the original trilogy i like the prequel movies i actually never watched the other stuff that came out kind of after that obviously i like the video games too i think they told really cool stories within the star wars universe but ever since disney has acquired star wars it seems like it's kind of two different entities. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like, you know, there's there's Star Wars before Disney and then there's Star Wars after Disney. Now, that's not a blanket statement to say that everything Disney has done with the franchise is bad because I think there have been some interesting things that have come from that. But obviously, Disney is trying to acquire this modern audience. And I don't think inherently expanding something that has a lot of lore that has a lot of source material is a bad thing but i think the way that disney handles this and the people that are involved with star wars now i think that's where this becomes a very problematic thing when you look at the reception to star wars acolyte obviously there are a lot of people that are not digging it i haven't watched an episode of it because it did not appeal to me but i've seen lots of clips i'm sure some of them out of context from the show that are just kind of like is this star wars <laughs> like I, I i'm not i'm not quite sure I'm not quite sure what you're trying to do here. I'm not quite sure what sort of narrative you're trying to tell or if there's a hidden agenda that's obviously not so hidden. But I'm kind of okay with doing stuff like that, even though you're taking a valued franchise, even though you're taking a valued property that has a large dedicated fan base. Like I remember back in the days when it was just the original trilogy there were Star Wars magazines coming out like in the 90s for a series and a franchise that hadn't had a new movie entry or really anything new in, in a decade. So it was a very interesting time. You know, it was a very interesting time. And a lot of people have very nostalgic feelings towards Star Wars, the Star Wars universe, because they grew up on it. It was something that they attached with. It was something that was very important to them. And the problem is, is that companies like Disney then take this, this property and want to put a, a, a modern spin on it, make it some sort of agenda that they're trying to push. Okay, whatever. But what happens is when people are like, hey, you know, this kind of this kind of destroys some of the lore. This kind of destroys some of the the prior things that have happened within the Star Wars universe. Like, th the thing is, Disney, the people involved with Star Wars, the 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 lead actress, the the person who is involved with promoting it, they attack people. They make fun of you. They say this isn't for you. This isn't for you. And I, I'm sitting back looking. This is this is for a different audience. And I'm sitting back looking at this like, well, who is this audience? If you go look at any sort of place like Rotten Tomatoes or something like that, you could see the Acolyte has a very high critic score, but a horrible viewer score, a horrible user score. And people just say, oh, well, that's just trolls. That's just trolls disliking it. And to some degree it is. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say it's not. But if somebody says, I don't like the direction of this of this film or this, this TV series that you're doing, 
all of a sudden they're like public enemy number one. What do you mean you don't like it? You have to like it. This is Star Wars. It's like, no, I, I don't have to like this. I don't have to agree with the modern audience. And, and, and obviously it extends to video games as well. Recently we saw Silent Hill 2. Konami put out a tweet saying that this was being done with modern audiences in mind. And in my naivety, is that the word? Naivety? Naivety? Something like that. I wanted to believe, and I, I'm still kind of holding on hope, that a modern audience means modern controls, modern, modern game features, not necessarily tinkering with the story and changing things. There was a big hoopla over one of the female characters in the game. I'm not going to ruin that story line wise or whatever, even though it's an old game that's probably using, you would assume a very similar storyline. But once again, saying stuff like that, it, it really paints a, a picture of people who want a more modern Silent Hill 2, who want you know better graphics and potentially better controls. Now there's that that worry that worry that you're going to take the source material, take the story, take elements from the story and either remove them, completely change them, or essentially rewrite what was a great story. And then I'm sure we're going to have the same sort of situation where it's like, well, if you disagree with this, you're the bad person. You're, you're a bad person. And it's like, I'm bad because I have nostalgia for something. I'm bad because I cared about something i'm bad because this was something that was important to me growing up like people don't understand that like forms of entertainment can be very personal for people it can be very attachment driven if you're in a bad situation say you come from a broken home or something like that and you watch a certain program or you played a certain video game and that was your escape from from the situation that you lived in or the situation that you were dealing with that's going to be something that stays with you for the rest of your life something like metal gear solid 2 to me you know i've told this story before but i was in a bad place in life and if it wasn't for metal gear solid you know playing metal gear solid 2 during a snowstorm i don't know where i would be it would probably be dead or in jail or something like that but like that game made such a big impact on me. And if Konami were to come along and be like, oh, we're, we're changing this story to make it more modern, even though like, let's be real, Kojima was a very progressive person. When you look at the characters within his game, like, like the thing that I take away from this is that people like to say that the modern audience thing has to be like extremely diverse all right so there's got to be women lgbtq people 2a plus i think they've added some more stuff whatever the, the lgbtq community you know uh, different races and stuff like that and then that's why people don't like it because there's a woman because there's a black dude because there's a gay guy and i, I sit back and think you know, maybe maybe there is something to it because there are people that are sexist. There are people that are inherently racist. It, it's never going to change. But I feel like that makes up such a small portion of people because I think back to stories and things that I have enjoyed. Go back to Metal Gear Solid 2. Look at that lineup of characters. Vamp, a bisexual vampire. Fortune, a woman of color. Fat Man a fat guy like that's one of the most diverse casts like ever in a game but nobody cared nobody was like well this is a problem what is this they were like how's the story and the story while batshit crazy was really good and really that's what it all comes down to at the end of the day is the product good you look at a game like baldur's gate 3 okay look at a game like baldur's gate 3 People love it. Critics love it. People love playing it. Look at some of the tropes and some of the things that are in that game. On paper, if you listed out the amount of things that that game does, 
people would say, oh, well, that's extremely woke. That That's a modern audience thing. But it's good. So people don't care. And that that's kind of what I take away from this. If the Acolyte was good, if they told a, a good story within the Star Wars universe that wasn't just batshit crazy, I think Star Wars fans at least some of them would would probably like it. I feel some of them are always going to just appreciate the classics and hope for that heyday, which may be sort of a gone thing. If Silent Hill 2 comes out and it looks good and it plays good and maybe they changed up the story, but they made it darker, they made it more sort of sinister, you know, made it a little bit more crazy. I don't think people would care. It's just like this modern audience thing is being put on to forms of entertainment that just aren't good. They're not enjoyable. And so because of that, they try to make you the fan, the person who spends money on the franchise, the person who 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 watches everything, the person who supports it feel bad while trying to to get a segment of the audience that they perceive to exist that doesn't really exist. Good writing, good characters, good stories, good good movies, good uh, TV shows, good games. That all supersedes anything else. Because at the end of the day, people just want to be entertained and they want to enjoy this entertainment. Because entertainment is supposed to be an escape. And I understand that there's times where it's not an escape. Documentaries, mockumentaries, and stuff like that. There's a time and a place for that kind of stuff, for sure. I love watching documentaries. But sometimes I just want to be entertained. I don't want to think about real-world problems. I don't want to think about all the stuff happening in, in real life or something like that. It's supposed to be whimsical, you know, an, an escape for people. But if you don't like it, you're the bad person. It's it's almost like what's old is new again. And we're going to wrap things up with this because I've just been rambling. It's almost like what's old is new again. And instead of just, you know, coming up with new characters, coming up with new IPs, coming up with new franchises, Hollywood, the video game industry, they're just like, well, let's take something that's established and change everything about it. That would be like me all of a sudden just coming on here one day and I'm just a car channel now. And I just start talking about cars and people who subscribed for video games, which they may have subscribed for, you know, nearly a, a you know, a decade now. I don't think it's been that long, but like eight years or something like that. People who subscribe for video games, if they're like, what the hell is this? What, what is this change? And I'm just like, Hey, wait a minute now, wait a minute. You're the bad person. You're the bad person. Like, at least with a YouTuber, like some people would stick around because they like my personality, the few and far between. But, you know, it, I don't understand blaming the audience. You're supposed to cater to the audience. If anything, you're supposed to pander at least a little bit to your audience because without your audience, you're not in the position to tell stories. You're not in the position to create video games. You're not in position to tell stories within video games. It's just something to keep in mind. And like I, this video's all over the place, but I think I think I kind of narrowed it down somewhat. Like I don't think a modern a modern audience is necessarily a bad thing, but saying it out loud just gives you a negative connotation because there have been so many games and so many movies and so many TV shows that have what would be today perceived as a modern audience that are classics, that people love, that people still watch, that people still enjoy, that people still play because it wasn't shoved in their face as this is a modern audience. You have to like this. And if you don't, you're a bad person. Those are just my thoughts on the situation, though. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Maybe give, you know what I'd like to see? Give some uh, movie recommendations, uh, TV shows, uh, video game recommendations of games that you would think would be perceived for, like, a modern audience in today's era, but nobody cared because it was good. Like, I think of Metal Gear Solid 2, Metal Gear Solid 3, uh, movies like Jesus Christ, like everything from the 80s and 90s was like it, men, women, 
different races and stuff like that. Like, it was just, you know, nobody cared. Nobody cared to be like, oh, whoa, look at that. It was just like, is the story good? Like, that's cool. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you are new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button, like, comment, and share. We'll probably be back to the normal nonsense tomorrow. I just wanted to have this conversation video, though, with you. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Later.